Hi, everyone. Welcome, and thank you so much for taking time to watch this pre recorded presentation Fostering a Culture of Academic Integrity with Open Educational Resources. My name is Rain Beeger, and today I'm joined by my colleagues Laurel Bastian and Billy Dobbs. And today we're hoping to share with you briefly about our cross campus collaboration to create some resources and supports for academic integrity on our campus using open educational practices with the hope that these practices and resources can be reused on your campuses too. On our campus, we found a need early on in the pandemic to reshape the conversation around academic, academic integrity, and in some ways proctoring and surveillance technology too, from one that was focused on monitoring and reporting student misconduct to a, a conversation and a culture focused on supporting students and understanding their role in the scholarly conversation and their responsibilities to act with integrity. To do this, we created a set of open educational resources that can be adapted and further customized, along with a set of open educational practices that invited students in to be co-creators of the resources and to share authentically about what these concepts mean to them and why they matter. We'll share briefly about our campus context and the need for the project, what research and values inspired our work, our process and key collaborators, what resources we actually created, and what we've learned so far along the way. We invite all of you to use and adapt our work, and we'd love to hear from you on how it may also be supporting academic integrity on your campus. So our institution might not be that different, perhaps, from, from the one uh, that you are at, if you're at one. The landscape of academic integrity here was not the centralized one, um, where we had a number of units already working together that we might have hoped for. Uh, instead, like many institutions, we had folks doing important things around academic integrity, but frequently just in their own units and departments. Uh, the context in which we started making these modules was also a context of the pandemic. We had instructors who were really concerned about academic integrity, particularly those faculty who had proctored exams. We had uh, students who were engaging with homework help websites like Chegg. Uh, where they actually weren't clear in some instances even whether that was an ethical resource for them or actually something that was enabling cheating and academic misconduct. And we, because we didn't have a central uh, message, centralized resources, we were really relying on instructors to be doing that communication and that communication differed across units. Uh, and instructors themselves said, please, we'd like some more centralized resources and communication. This is a significant challenge that we're facing. What we just described as our context is a context we also saw in headlines across the country. It's still a major topic of discussion for many universities and many units. And so we wanted to ask ourselves, what's the research behind how we can bolster academic uh, integrity and, and what are the reasons and contributors for academic misconduct in higher education? The research that we most appreciated uh, was actually the Handbook of Academic Integrity edited by the late Tracy Braytag. And we particularly appreciated that it was global in scope. It was very comprehensive. And we were able to ascertain some patterns uh, between the different chapters and research that folks did. And one of the patterns that really stood out to us was that academic integrity has traditionally been framed as a moral judgment. You do it and you're bad. Don't do it so you can be good. That for students was not effective. We also really heard that students increasingly have experienced genuine confusion around what constitutes misconduct, in part because of the rise, thankfully, in um, in active learning and students not being yet able to ascertain is this uh, something that's collaborative or actually is this something that would be seen as collusion. Students wanted more supported practice around citation methods. And at our institution, it's not yet something that we're giving abundantly. And in many institutions, that's not something that's centrally provided. And the research indicated that students are more likely to engage in misconduct when any of the following conditions are met. Uh, the first one was really big. 
They believe their peers are engaging in misconduct. And we see uh, that increased tension when there are grading curbs, uh, other kind of scarce resource mentalities. We see an increase in academic misconduct when stress levels are high. We see that for people, whether they're students or not, we make different choices with those high stress levels. And then we see an increase in academic misconduct when students don't perceive meaningful repercussions for their actions. So given the research, we then thought, all right, how are we going to uh, build something that will align with that research and also with our values as educators and values with, um, that the institution also has? We really built the core of these modules on top of a press book, uh, the Kwantlen Polytechnic University's Academic Integrity press book that we appreciated greatly. And so uh, this OER is a great one. And the things that we see here, the intent and inspiration was, was really built in and added on to what existed. But those things that we built in included really uh, foregrounding a tone of respect for students for their work and an assumption of integrity, striving for that centralized message that we noted. And here, that's also a culture shift. So all students, all ducks at the University of Oregon practice academic integrity, and we all talk about it this first year. Really offering the interactive scenarios that feel authentic to students, where they can practice applying the student conduct code and then centering their voices. So it matters not because it's good or bad necessarily, but it matters because your peers say it matters. And this is what their direct wording might, uh, might how the direct wording would be persuasive. We also wanted to emphasize the resources that are here when students are stressed and really normalize accessing those resources as part of being a really successful student. So this entire project became a collaboration between a number of individuals across our campus. It was important for us to include a range of collaborators so we could shape the conversation and keep the emphasis on academic integrity. And it also helped anchor it in information literacy. Each collaborator had different complementary expertise and access to different stakeholders. Collectively, there was expertise on information literacy, technology and course design, points of confusion around academic integrity for students, on faculty concerns and goals, and on campus processes and regulations already in place for these issues. The main collaborators spanned five different units on campus. We had UO Libraries, our Teaching Engagement Program, or TEP, UO Online, the Office of the Dean of Students, particularly their unit on student conduct and community standards, and student orientation programs, who put together the various orientations known as introduction for incoming freshmen and transfer students. Additionally, we had the assistance of student employees who provided advice, feedback, and content for the module. We'll talk more about their contributions in just a bit. So what did we create? We ended up with two different modules. The first was an optional module that instructors could use in their classes. This module was largely based off of the LibGuide our colleague Bronwyn Maxim created, which was informed by the ACRL framework for information literacy. And at the time, it was the only support we knew available for instructors and students on academic integrity on our campus. We converted the, we converted the LibGuide into a Canvas module so that it could easily be imported and integrated into existing course module structures. We invited faculty to make disciplinary customizations and or to reach out to TEP and the libraries to collaborate on additional instruction and resources. We condensed and revised the LibGuide to break it into four main parts for the module, which included content on the scholarly conversation, academic honesty, attribution and citation, and copyright and fair use. It includes an optional academic integrity pledge that instructors can assign with or without points in their class. The second module we created was a learning experience that all students go through as part of their online orientation when beginning their studies at the university. We have a series of orientation programs that all incoming freshmen and transfer students must complete as part of, as part of introduction. This format allowed us to include much more in-depth content, including active learning and assessment. It largely draws influence from the KPU Pressbook and adapts the Pressbook into an interactive module where students submit work and facilitators can monitor students' completion. If you're interested in checking out the module content, we'll provide information on how to access it at the end of this presentation. 
one of the things we've most benefited from in making this OER is uh, the contributions of students. And there were several ways and uh, two different general stages that students were able to make contributions to this module. One of the ways was to give us really helpful feedback, uh, both in the draft stage uh, and in letting us know how the navigation was or how long it took to move through the module or how effective the scenarios were for them, how realistic they might be. Um, but also to give us feedback uh, after the module was complete, uh, that required module that Bailey mentioned, so that this can be an iterative process. The other primary way that students were contributors is by literally saying, yes, I'm going to check a box. Please do include why I think academic integrity is meaningful. Why is it meaningful to me? Uh, please do include that in a future iteration of this module so that students could see what their peers uh, said and really feel that impact for themselves as well. So we have several key design elements that we have spoken to, but we want to just highlight again. Uh, one is really low stakes interactives to check comprehension. And part of this was in the existing press book that we built into, but really um, amplifying and, and uh, making content context specific uh, scenarios as well. Highlighting those student voices was a key design element. And then really thinking about inclusive content, whether that be in the examples or in the imagery that we provided. Those opportunities for student feedback were a really meaningful design element. And then making sure that we are centering accessible design so that all of the incoming students can actually interact with the module. And then of course, openly licensing the module that we created. In terms of how many students we know this has impacted so far, we had over 4,000 students last year take the module as part of their introduction ex experience, and over 5,000 students are taking the module this year. Uh, so just raw numbers alone, we know that over 9,000 students have experienced the module, and all students on some level have read and uh, applied the student conduct code. As Laurel referenced, within the module, students were invited to reflect on a couple of questions to help us see how the module is shaping students' thinking on academic integrity. Students had the opportunity to indicate if they were comfortable with the responses being publicly shared, both as part of a resource that we provided to faculty to hear from student voices, but also as content for the module moving forward. So in this way, we were able to incorporate some open educational practices and involve students as co-creators of the learning experience for themselves and their peers that would take it in subsequent academic years. We compiled the responses as part of an interactive Padlet that we provided back to faculty and they can explore. And we selected some specific responses to include as content in the module. So in this question here, we can see that students were asked what academic integrity means to them and why it matters. And here we can see a student responding with, to me, academic integrity means acknowledging and respecting the work that others have poured time and resources into learning and sharing with others. In exchange for learning from those people, you need to credit them and when you use their teachings, because without their work, you would need to pour your own time and resources into learning what they did. And here, students were also asked to think through what supports they would lean on in times of need, especially in times where they may be more stressed and where acting with integrity may be much harder for them. So here we can see a student respond with, Support from my professors directly and Yule Library will come in very useful when I am becoming stressed. I imagine myself asking professors directly about their academic integrity codes because it may differ from course to course on certain things like when to work with peers. Between last year and this year, 266 students completed an optional Qualtrics form to provide some valuable feedback on their learning experience with the module, where they were asked both what benefited their learning and what detracted uh, or was missing from their learning experience. More than 50% of student comments expressed appreciation for the interactive components of the module, such as the scenarios that were provided with multiple choice, 
fill in the blank activities, uh, which were created with H5P, reflective questions, and being able to hear from all of their peers in the student responses. A significant proportion also appreciated being much clearer about the complexities to academic integrity, such as when it's appropriate to work with their peers. Um, as part of this increased clarity, many students mentioned the real life scenarios being really helpful to them. Many students mentioned the benefit of resources that they could turn to when they're stressed and in need, and several mentioned appreciating that the module acknowledged historical power issues around citation. Overall, students were very positive about the design choices and noted that they felt like the module was very navigable. When asked about what was missing from the module or anything that felt counterproductive to their learning experience, some students commented that they found it overwhelming or repetitive in terms of their prior knowledge or other resources they had been uh, given in the past. And some of this feedback focused on just using less text in the module and more multimedia and more concision generally, a goal that we have uh, moving forward. Students identified things that they wanted us to add to the module. And the two most common requests we got were more student perspectives and video where possible. Students wanted more practice with uh, two main things, one being citation practices, which we didn't address extensively in the module, and also collaborating ethically with their peers and how to push back on a peer if they are attempting to engage in misconduct. Students also highlighted pedagogically important practices that impact academic integrity and faculty need to consider in their course design. Here, a student commented, I would note that the module doesn't acknowledge the possible issues that a curriculum may have. If a curriculum is so unoriginal that a student could feasibly use their work multiple times, that uh, curriculum ought to change. And here, a connection to textbook affordability there could be something in here about the issue of textbooks assigned by various courses. Students may hope to save money by using outdated versions of textbooks or pirating current editions online. This course could speak on how such things relate to academic integrity. So as we're at this point uh, in our cycle of looking at student responses and thinking about how we might want to revise We've also been thinking about what the lessons are that we might want to take from the process. And so some things that we've noted internally, uh, one continuous improvement is a challenge when that improvement isn't attached to a particular role. Uh, and so here we don't yet have a specific owner of the process. Um, we have people that have relationships and do work together, um, but having a role where that's part of, uh, of the total time with, that that role might spend um, or a more formal, formal centralization of stakeholders would be supportive. We also keep coming back to the difficulty to define and assess whether this module is successful without yet a more centralized institutional plan to support academic uh, uh, integrity. And we really note that the work is not yet visible to instructors in the way that we had hoped it would be. Uh, and we hope to take some steps in this next year and try out how we might make it more visible and more useful to instructors within their individual courses. In this project, we created OER modules and we employed open educational practices to invite students into the conversation around academic integrity, both to elevate their voices and allow them to hear authentic reflections about why this matters to their peers. We know that academic integrity is essential to the scholarly conversation and the academic community being able to build upon the work of their peers and in this way, it's also essential to open educational resources and being able to adapt the work of others. In the module, we invite students into and encourage them to see themselves as part of this scholarly conversation and start to support them in developing some digital literacies around sharing their work with their peers online. Consent seeking and being explicit about student choice was central to our design. The University of Saskatchewan sums this up really nicely. 
Choice not only promotes engagement and the student's sense of ownership, but also decreases cheating and plagiarism. We think that if students are engaged authentically in co-creating a shared understanding of these concepts and a shared understanding of the cost of misconduct as they characterize and express those thoughts, it starts to shift the focus away from grades and towards more authentic learning, learning that doesn't rely on one answer. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to our presentation today. Here you'll find a QR code where you can learn more about uh, our process and our project along with helpful resources and research cited, as well as an, o an OER Commons QR code where you can explore and download the module for your own use. Please be in touch if you have any questions or want to share about how you're using the resource. And thank you for your time.